What's up, everybody? Welcome to another Desk Talk. In this week's video, I want to help future food truck owners or current food truck owners, or maybe you're a small business owner or even a fast casual, any restaurant, brick and mortar. I want to help you understand what the profit and loss sheet looks like for a business. So we're going to teach you how to understand to read a profit and loss sheet for the food industry. Okay. As a CFO of a restaurant group, I created dashboards. I was responsible for managing the profit and loss balance sheet, obviously the financials for a uh, pretty big restaurant group. And every week we would look at certain numbers to make sure that we were staying within a certain threshold so that we could increase profitability. If you do not have a system that can generate a report to show you what your numbers look like on a weekly basis, I suggest that you look to invest into something like a restaurant 365 or some sort of QuickBooks version where you can load your square receipts, um, etc. But what I'm going to do now is we're going to discuss a profit and loss sheet for a food industry, for the food industry, which applies for a food truck, applies for a restaurant, applies for any food industry out there. Okay, so your P&L or profit and loss sheet for your food truck is going to be broken down into several parts. The profit and loss sheet for a for the restaurant industry is very similar to any other industry except that it divides the sales into food sales, beverage sales, liquor, beer, and wine sales, and then your cost of goods sold or your um, cost of sales into the food and into beverage. It's very important that you can monitor separately because you want to be able to detect variances that if you multiply over a 52 week period can add up to a ton of money. So in this P&L, you have your sales at the top, sales, then cost of sales, which give you a gross, which gives you a gross profit, right? And the gross profit is just basically what you sold minus what it cost you to sell those items. In the food industry, the cost of sales will be determined by how much inventory you have at the end of the week or how often you do inventory. You can't just say, I purchased $10,000 worth of food during a given week and sold 15,000 and that's your cost of goods. No, because you're gonna have inventory left over. You're gonna have stuff that you haven't run out of. You're gonna have inventory there to keep producing. So as you do inventory, that's how you generate your cost of goods. Um, a rule of thumb for a food truck or any restaurant is to keep your cost of goods or your food cost between 25 to 30%, right? So 25 to 30% over a period of time, and you can measure this on a weekly basis especially if you have high priced items like proteins that are expensive. You want to be able to monitor those prices because as those costs go up, you need to be able to either increase prices or begin to take things off your menu that are just not uh, profitable for you. Then you have your beverage cost, your liquor, beer and wine cost. The most profitable part of any P&L in a restaurant, if they sell liquor, beer and wine is going to be liquor, beer and wine. Then you have your payroll right? Then you have your payroll broken up into salaries and wages and employee benefits. Your total salaries and wages, which includes hourly and full-time employees, should never be more than 30% total, including benefits. So you have to make sure that whatever you're paying on a weekly basis stays between the 25 and 30% and obviously, it will depend heavily on the type of business that you run, how profitable it is, um, what your price point is on your menu. That will determine how well you can control your labor cost. So that basically, the, the most important parts of any food business 
are your cost of sales and your labor, which in the industry is referred to your prime cost. Your prime cost should never, ever, ever be more than 60%. If it's more than 60%, you're not efficient enough and you have to look at where the money is going in terms of costs. What menu items aren't profitable that are being sold, they may be a lost leader for you, but maybe they're not generating the sales everywhere else to generate the profitability to keep things on your menu. Or maybe your food cost just went up. Uh, for example, right now we're facing shortages and I know for a fact that proteins are going up. So as protein costs go up, you have to raise the price on your menu, okay? Then you'll have all your controllable expenses. Below there, you have your direct and operating expenses, uh, music and entertainment, marketing, utilities, and then these basically can all be broken down into whatever it is that you have in terms of cost in your, uh, in your food business. Um, the percentages, it'll depend on how well you manage your sales. So for example, you want your marketing to be between one to 5% of sales. That's probably a good range to be in. But again, it just depends on how good you feel about your investment in marketing. Remember, marketing is always an investment. There is a return on every marketing dollar that you put in. Then you have your occupancy costs, your depreciation and amortization, which leads you to have a net income before taxes. And for example, this restaurant or this example that I have here, you have $700,000 in sales, your food costs at $197,000, salaries and wages at around $212,000, and you have total expenses of $268,000. So I would say there may be something amiss here, but 20% uh, net income before taxes is relatively high for any uh, business, but I'm not saying it can't be done. So don't pay attention to the actual numbers that I'm showing here. What I want you to see is the structure and how to understand how to improve these numbers and how to get to the point where you see these on a weekly basis and you can share it with your staff, with your team members, and they too can understand what the hell is going on. Okay. Again, very simple. Broken down, a profit and loss sheet is going to tell you how well your, how much, how profitable your company is. And in the food industry, it's very important to understand what's being sold, how much it's costing you to sell those items, and how much labor is going into producing or selling those items. And this should be measured every single week, especially if you're high volume. Uh, and let me break this down. Let me give you an example. Um, let's say it costs you sell 300 plates of any protein. Maybe it's a, it's a hibachi bowl with steak on it and that steak costs you X, right? Today and your menu and your item, it's profitable, right? You have a 70% contribution margin, but let's say that item goes up and you lose 10% profitability from that item. That 10% profitability on 300 items times 52 weeks will equal a lot of money. So every week it was important for us, for example, in the restaurant that I manage the finances to look at these levels every single week. Um, when you're getting into the millions of volume, especially if you have a lot of volume, um, it needs to be detected ASAP and also in payroll. Let's say your payroll is going up or down on every given week. Uh, you have to monitor these shifts in your labor cost very, very carefully. Like we would set a goal, for example, to be hourly labor, not to be more than 20% every single week, between 18 to 20%. If it was higher than 20%, we knew something was amiss. And so then we would have meetings with our managers and say, hey guys, what's going on here? You guys projected $40,000 in sales this week. You did 30 and your labor now is 25% because you didn't detect that the sales were not gonna be the same all week long and you could have started cutting some shifts or you could have started doing things differently. Let's see what's going on. Let's create a game plan. 
what's going on with the sales. Maybe it was a shitty weather week, like weather affects sales. Um, if it rains all week, people don't like to go out. So you have to monitor these things and you have to take decisive action to make sure that you're watching your profitability. And that's basically it. Very simple, profit and loss sheet tells you how profitable you are, what it takes to produce, what it costs to produce the sales every given time period. This is a yearly one, for example. I'm looking at five year forecast on this, on this, uh, on this sheet, but you can look at it, this exact same sheet on a weekly basis. Is it gonna take more work? Probably. Are you gonna have to do inventory every once in a while? Yes, every single week you're gonna have to do inventory. Especially if you wanna detect things that are like walking away from your, from your business. And uh, I hope this helped. If you got some value from this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Join us in our Facebook group, Food Truck and Trailers Tips and Tricks. If you're in the market for a food truck, hit up Trailer King Builders top of the line concession trailers and food trucks. You can go to our website, www.trailerkingbuilders.com and actually get a quote, customize your build out on our website and know instantly how much it's gonna cost to invest in that business that you wanna start. I hope this helped, thank you very much. Have an awesome day.